I wanted to get into playing a pedal steel for a while, but as those can be quite expensive and difficult to find, I decided to start out with a lap steel guitar. I bought this one about a couple of weeks ago, and this is the Gretz G5700 Electromatic. And right away I knew I wanted to install the Sertano palm benders on it, to get as close as possible to the sound of a pedal steel. It is quite affordable, although it's not the cheapest option I could find. It cost me around $500. It's a Gretz made in China, one piece of mahogany with one single coil bridge pickup, a volume knob, a tone knob, and uh, aluminium nut. It came with that chrome plate here that uh, I needed to remove when I installed the benders. And as you can see, I actually replaced the bridge as well, but more on that later. This is not the first time I installed Sertano benders on one of my guitars, but last year, I installed a GMB Bender unit from David Sertano on my Telecaster. Absolutely love it and if you're a regular viewer of this channel, you've seen me playing them quite a bit. The Sertano Benders are made by David Sertano in France and when I got in touch with David the other day to order the lap steel Benders he actually suggested that I'd get the roller bridge as well as many of his customers had actually ordered that combo for this particular model, the Gretz uh, G5700 as the roller bridge should really help out with tuning stability etc. The installation process for the benders and the roller bridge was really straightforward, quick and easy and the whole thing probably took me about one hour. So first of all I needed to remove the strings and the chrome plated cover so I could access the old bridge. I then removed the old bridge and made some marks so I could put the new bridge in the perfect spot. And as you can see the guitar comes strung through but as the new bridge is top loaded and it actually covers the string holes I needed to push out the uh, little buttons that were standing out. David sent me this template sheet which I could use to position the bridge and the banter unit perfectly together and once I had done all the marking I could just do all the drilling in one go three holes for the bridge and two for the banter unit. So now all I had left to do was to screw the bridge on, screw the bottom of the banter unit on and then assemble the banter unit properly, uh, put in new strings and then adjust the levers. So once you've got everything set up, you've got fresh strings and you've tuned the instrument to the tuning you want to use, you just need to adjust the levers on the banter unit and we've got three screws here. The one at the back is the one we use to adjust the height so you can sort of take the levers a bit further away from the strings or a bit closer. That one here you can adjust to tighten or loosen the lever. Let's say if you want to play some palm muting for example, you can actually just pull them back like that. But uh, the most important screw here is the one in the middle, but that is the one we use to adjust the pitch. So I can basically adjust the pitch to a semitone or whole tone or one and a half tone. But uh, here I've got an F sharp and this one goes up a semitone, while this string here goes up a whole tone. And the tuning I'm using is open D. D, A, D, F sharp, A, D. Mm -hmm. 
As I'm quite new to playing the lap steel guitar, I've been trying out different tunings just to see which one works the best for me. And it seems like there are these two main tunings that people are using. It's either the C6 tuning, which has sort of that Western swing, country, even Hawaiian sound, while others play in open D, where you get that sort of bluesy, swampy sound. And I was actually playing in C6 before I installed the benders, and then I tried the benders with the C6 tuning for a bit, but it didn't really work out as I had hoped for. I didn't really find sort of those pedal steel licks I was looking for, so I tried putting in heavier strings and tuning down to open D. And here I've got some really nice licks. Let's say if I play this just G chord here. Band that one up a semitone. And then it's a G sus4 chord. And if I bend the other one, up a whole tone, it's a G sus2. And if I like, I can do both at the same time. It's a really cool sound, sort of mechanical bend. Very accurate. Like in most of my other videos, I'm playing through my Camper Stage Profiler, and here you can hear a Fender Blues Deluxe Profile, a clean profile by Michael Britt, with some uh, Tube Screamer on top, a bit of delay, and loads of reverb. And since I've only had the lap steel for about a couple of weeks, I'm still sort of playing around with different amp profiles. But I'm quite happy with the Blues Deluxe and I will definitely keep playing through that one for a while. I have to say that I'm quite excited about this new project and it's always fun to pick up a new instrument. Although I feel like I have to do quite a lot of practicing on this one until I can start bringing it to gigs. But I really look forward to being able to bring it to gigs. I can bring my Telecaster which has benders and is in standard tuning. This one is an open tuning with benders so I could do all the slight work on this one. But this is not a pedal steel by any means but I mean I can come close in some ways but still quite limited. The uh, pedal steel has a way more of a range, way more possibilities in terms of bending, etc. I'm sure there are many of you guys who are watching this who know way more about lap steels or pedal steels than I do. So if you have any tips for us who are just getting started, please let us know in the comments below. But if you're interested, please check out this video over here where I'm showing you guys how I installed the GMB benders on my Telecaster. And I will see you there. Thank you for watching.